super fun stuff. Welcome to another super fun stuff print and paint video. In this episode, we continue to make Marvel minis for Crisis Protocol. I also am trying a new camera setup in this video, so let me know how you like it. We made Omega Red and Wolverine last time, and I hinted at making another villain this time. So let's take a guess. This villain has fought the famous heroes such as Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and the Hulk. He was created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko back in the 60s. In a spin-off comic, he killed Spider-Man in the most brutal way, and another comic was beaten by Spider-Man in the most ridiculous way. He might be one of the most durable supervillains in all of Marvel, as well as having the easiest weakness to exploit. Without giving too much away, who do you think it is? And the answer is Sandman. Sandman born William Baker is a criminal turned supervillain. He started out with a troubled life, became a bully, had a weird thing for his teacher, and fell into hanging out with the wrong crowd. Eventually he started committing pretty bad crimes, and changed his name to Flint Marco. Fleeing from authorities, he was exposed to radiation and his body interacted with the sand under his feet, mutating him into the Sandman. With this mutation, he can now transform his body into any shape, compact, hard, and loosen his sand particles, and create shapes like hammers or maces with his hands. He is basically impervious to all attacks too. He becomes pretty strong, as strong or stronger than the Thing from Fantastic Four, and can change his size. However, he has been defeated many times, either by using lots of water to loosen the sand particles, using cement to harden his body, and the funniest one, an industrial vacuum cleaner. Yep, Spidey sucked him up. However, later, Sandman gets his revenge in the Marvel Zombies Return number one, where Sandman explodes zombie Spider-Man by filling him up with sand and busting out of his body. Now that is brutal. Sandman is one of the more popular Spider-Man baddies. You may remember him in the movie Spider-Man 3, which was a pretty good portrayal even if the rest of the movie sucked. So Sandman is pretty cool. Let's make a mini out of him. Looking online, there's basically no 3D models of Sandman. However, I found this cool 3D model from 3D WP. It's apparently a 3D scan from a larger Sandman figurine. This model looks great, and for a 3D scan, it's pretty fantastic. Scaling him down, I print him out. I made this guy a little bit bigger, and he'll be using a 50mm base. First step I do is to mount him on the base. I wanted to make sure that I fit him just right. I take a piece of cork and pin him on it. The cork is a tad oversized for the base, but for this model, that works. Usually, I like to keep it no bigger than the base itself, but Sandman is pretty spread out on the bottom. And now to primer. I add primer to him in the base. With the primer done, I go with finishing up the base. So I take my Peter Gray and paint the base around him. Then I add my strong tone to the base, and then I go into my dry brushing. Now on to the base colors of the model. I first start with a pretty bright green skin green for a shirt. I make sure to get a nice full color. Then I move to the brown pants using a leather brown. Next is skin, which in this case is just his face. And I use a normal flesh tone. And lastly, the hair. For this, I use a more muted monster brown. For washes, I use a strong wash on his pants and hair, then a dark black wash for his shirt, and a flesh wash for his face. If you notice, I haven't painted his arms or leg yet, which are pretty much the sand parts. My plan is to finish the rest of him and transition the sand on top. This way I can finish all the highlights and details underneath without trying to paint them next to the sand. Speaking of highlights, let's do those next. First off is green. I take the same green I was using before and do a few touch-ups around the shirt. This fixes some of the spots that the wash darkened too much. While that dries, I go to the pants and add a richer color highlight. I use a fur brown to accent his legs. Now I go back to the shirt and use a very thin goblin green. I layer on the highlights little by little to brighten things up. Then I go back to the pants and use a watered down skeleton bone. I use the same highlight on his skin and hair, specifically around his jaw, cheeks, and square forehead. Then I figure to paint his teeth, I use a white for the teeth and apply a flesh wash on top. His eyes I paint a default white, and I later add a really small dark brown dot, very very tiny. Then to the belt, which I paint a flat black, I make sure to leave the pant loops. To finish off the belt, I add a silver buckle. Now for the fun part, I paint a black horizontal stripes on the shirt. I take my time and make pretty deliberate marks. I first make fairly small stripes just to mark the spots. Then I go back over the stripes and make them a bit thicker. I pulled up a photo of Sandman just to make sure I get the proper amounts of stripes and spacing. With everything else painted, it's time for the sand. I use a desert yellow to start. I mostly stay in the modeling lines for the sand. 
The only areas I venture past this is on the legs a bit to make it a little bit more interesting. Now to the wash for the sand. I use a soft wash on all the sand parts. There's a lot of good details that's going to really pop out with this. You can see here all the little crevices in the sand. To finish the sand, I use a dry brush technique using a mixture of the desert yellow and skeleton bone. I also do a little brush dabs to make it a little splotchy looking. And here he is. This is Sandman, all done. He wasn't too crazy and it was interesting to leave the sand to the very end. The techniques were pretty simple and this model went pretty quick. It's cool this game can mix and match heroes and villains. It really allows you to create a pretty interesting narrative. Plus, it's just neat to see these characters come to life. For the next mini, which will be our 10th episode, we're going to do the coolest model yet. This model even comes with a pre-made base that I like. This character is an Omega level mutant who has fought the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and basically everyone in the Marvel Universe at some point. Also, this character is one of the only people who is immune to Rogue's power siphoning ability. I'll let you think about who it is, I may even have a surprise in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and thank you to my patrons and supporters. Until next time.